Let's just sew whatever. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be making the Petite Elaine. This is um, a modification on my own pattern, the Elaine handbag. Um, I explained it in the cutting video, but this was um, inspired by my friend Nikki, who did not have enough materials to make her, her tester a million years ago. And um, so she cut all the pattern pieces down by two inches and the final result was just absolutely adorable. Um, so here it is. This is what we're making today and I hope that you will join me um, because you're already here. You click the video, you may as well just watch it, right? Okay, let's go. All right, y'all, we are ready to get started on making our petite lane. Uh, this is a, a quite an old pattern of mine, um, but it's an oldie, but a goodie, we'll call it. So I'm going to start with my straps just because my bobbin is full. So I've got a crossbody strap that I'm doing, and then I've got two shoulder straps. I am using a Tex... Uh, 70 thread from Amon and the machine I'm using is a Juki 1181N if you did not know and then my preferred thread needle size is size 19 okay so I'm folding my vinyl into the center marking I made when I cut it out and I'm starting from the inside and working my way out and I believe this kind of prevents twisting in the strap. The vinyl I'm using <clears throat> is something we call glazed clay on my website. Um, this was not a color we released but it is a really pretty color. Maybe eventually. Um, the other vinyl I'm using is a mid-weight Lux that I don't offer this print on my website, but I do offer the kind of vinyl that it is. So it's just like a, a lighter weight printed vinyl. It almost feels like cork um, in thickness if you've tried that. So I've got my stitch length set to about 4.5 or a 5 to do the top stitching. I'm just starting in one corner of the edge that needs to be folded. So it's the open edge. And I'm just folding it as I go. And then I'm gonna stop with my needle down in the corner, stitch over, and then all the way down the other side. And then I backstitch at the beginning and end, trim all my stitches, and then you can use strap ends if you want. I'm just going to cut to an even end on my strap. That's all that I do for my straps. So I'll set that aside and we'll work on the rest of them. Sewing straps this fast definitely takes time to get used to doing, um, but I kind of use what I call Ouija board hands to keep my fabric straight and I'm just basically acting as a guide for the straps as they move through so I'm not pr pressing hard on them or having to push them through the machine, I'm just letting it go. So there's no twisting or pulling on my strap or anything like that. No stretching. I'm 
And then that's a little bit harder to do on a crossbody strap because it's so long. So if you have a bigger table, you could do that with, that'd be good. But I will do my best. We're just going to start in the middle here. And I'm lining it up to the center and then bringing my other hand across to press it in place. Again, thousands of straps that I have made. <laughs> Gets faster every time. It's just all about practice. And the right materials, I guess. Like, double-sided tape is a huge, just a game changer. Tell you what. All right. And then usually with a crossbody strap, I'll just throw it over my shoulder. And if you are worried about your strap needing to be perfect and lined up, you can clip it all or you can use another little layer of tape to hold it together. I just fold it as I go. You want to stitch down all four sides. All right, and now we're gonna need our slide adjusters, adjuster and crossbody strap. Oh my gosh, snap hooks and slide adjuster. Great, you did it. Wrap around the center. If you wanna fold over your fabric, you can. And I'm just gonna do two parallel lines. So slide that up and over. And then I'm gonna do a little box stitch on this end of the strap. And then you can take your lighter to any of those fraying ends, but that is our strap completed. And now we're going to move on to making our 
main panels and our V-shaped pocket. So I'm gonna need my magnetic snaps, my main panel without the side panels taped, my V-shaped pocket. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and prep my strap connectors as well because we're gonna be making some adjustments. I've actually never made the Petite Elaine with the V-shaped pocket. Um, and we're doing it for the Wizardry Getaway in May. And there are still tickets available if you are interested. I can't believe it's already April. <sighs> Crazy. So I'm prepping my connectors. I went ahead and cut this as one long piece that I'll cut into equal sizes. And I'm going to top stitch at a quarter inch on either side. Just a little accent. And then I'm going to cut them into four inch pieces. Ooh. And then these are going to be my D ring connectors on the side panel, but just for consistency, I'm going to top stitch these two. I'm starting in the center, working my way out. I'm putting a little bit of double-sided tape on all of them on the folded side. And I'm not doing this quite in the center. I'm doing it in like the lower third of that connector piece. Setting two aside for later. And then we'll have these four ready to go when we need them. On my V-shaped accent, this vinyl has a fuzzy backing, so just super quick, running my lighter along the back. And that'll just prevent any fraying in the future. And then we can use some double-sided tape to keep this from shifting. Or you could glue this if you would prefer. If you have trouble getting your double-sided tape off, I like to like press really hard in one section and then try to pull the fabric back to get the paper off instead of trying to peel the paper off. Hopefully that makes somewhat sense. So you're not going to see the top edge of this accent. 
but you will see the bottom edge. So I'm not super concerned with how that top edge looks when I'm top stitching it into place. I'm going to switch it down to a 4.5. And I am just following an eighth of an inch from that edge, pivoting as I go. Leave your needle in. If you pivot and you're not quite over far enough, just kind of manually manipulate your stitch <clears throat> to get it where it needs to go. Awesome. And then we'll go up and over. If you are worried about this being way too bulky for your machine with the materials you've picked, before you start top stitching this top edge, you could trim the back side of your pocket <clears throat> down. So you could trim a little bit if the materials all together are just a little bit too much. Okay, so normally we would add our magnetic snap 1.75 from the bottom of that v-shape but we're going to do an inch and a half and I'm going to write that down So we'll take one of our washers and we'll take the Audi snap. And you can mark this out or you can gently seam rip. And then instead of like Decaville or anything, I'm just going to add a little scrap of the waterproof canvas. There's that. And then we'll put right sides together. If you need to mark out your seam allowance, you absolutely can. And the seam allowance for that is a quarter of an inch. going to snip into the V as close to the stitching as we can and we're going to trim away the seam allowance at the top corner. And then we'll turn this Press into that corner really, really well. And you'll just kind of roll that seam in between your fingers. This is actually the first time I've used vinyl under and on top, so it is a bit bulkier than I would recommend for a domestic. 
but it's not bad. And then we're going to top stitch Stopping in the corner, pivoting again. Needle in and pivot. And then if you wanted to go all the way around the pocket, you can, but I don't think it's necessary. And then I'm just going to lay this down and see where it falls. So I'm going to be playing with a couple options for the strap connectors and just kind of talking through them. They're supposed to be an inch and a half from the top and one inch from the side. So because this is double sided tape, I can just set it in place and we'll see what we think. Because... If I top stitch it on there, it's underneath my pocket. Otherwise, I could shorten the V-shaped pocket, but it would be like by a lot. It would look kind of awkward and the snap's really low. So that might be the only option here. I don't think that's terrible. Kind of hidden, we'll peek. We'll go ahead and do that. Um, so for my strap connectors, all I did was fold the top edge down quite a bit, about two-thirds, and then folded this edge up about a third. And then I've got two different rulers here, one one inch, and the other one measuring my one and a half. And I can just press those where they need to go. And then we're going to top stitch around an eighth of an inch from the edge. And then I'm just pulling my stitch to the back. So if you marked on your main panel the snap placement, you'll follow that, but I did not do that. I should have and I didn't. So what I can do is line this up. I've used a little bit of silver marking pen on that piece. I can just push down, and there's where my magnetic snap goes.
And then I have another scrap of waterproof canvas in here. And if you need double the support, you could even fold it or cut it in half. We're into little squares. And then lay this flat and even. And we'll clip this down and baste along the edges and the bottom so that things aren't shifting later when we add our side panels. And what's interesting is that I taped down my side panels when I was cutting on the other piece, but we can't have that because when we add our main panels, it's going to change the measurement for where our strap connectors go, but it's not the end of the world. I can take the tape off. What a silly mistake. All right, let's go ahead and add our side panels. These are going to lay with the corner cut out to the bottom and facing in. And this is a half inch seam allowance. So be careful of the hardware on your connector. And back stitching at the beginning and the end. Gently, gently stretching out the vinyl to make sure it fits over the bulk. And then I'm going to borrow some techniques from Shannon at Knotted Threads Co. And we're going to reduce bulk on the side panels by snipping down about three quarters of an inch and up three quarters. You don't have to do this, but it is helpful if you have a domestic, especially. And so what we're going to be doing with that bulk is laying it open at the top edge. And we're going to top stitch. And then just go really slow when we get to the pocket to walk up the hill. Pull on that side panel as you're top stitching and then at the bottom, half of that, you're going to butterfly open. And then I'll finish that stitch by sewing over
that accent piece. So that that stays down. And repeat that on the other side. Butterfly open that seam. So that is that side of the exterior done. And so we've got this great big pocket there and we're ready to move on. So I'm just gonna, yeah, take the tape off. I don't know what I was thinking. We'll go ahead and prep these connectors. I'll also be adding my nameplate to this side. I like to fold over the top edge more than the bottom edge. Line those up. Excuse you. Stay down. Okay, and then this is going to be one inch from the side, one and a half from the top. What's fun is the tape means it won't come off. Hopefully I remember in my video of cutting it to be like, hey, don't don't do this. I feel like I can breathe when I'm done doing those. All 
All right, <laughs> back to the side panels. Lay those in place. And if you need to mark out your half inch seam allowance, you absolutely can. an inch which I feel like nowadays I'm like half an inch oh my gosh that's so excessive and really it's like it's fine I would love to know down below what your preferred seam allowance is I feel like that's one of my favorite questions to ask people what is your favorite seam allowance? Okay, we're gonna butterfly open that seam, pulling apart that tape. So it's gonna be a little bit hard to top stitch with that tape, wanting to stick to the machine. I think in Shannon's pattern, she normally has you tape the other side so it stays open. I'm just taped the wrong way. Because lately I've been losing my mind. Okay. So cute. So now we're gonna add a woven, nope, a nameplate. I think I can use this scrap. Yes. So we'll find the center, which should be four and a half.
So now we're going to add the bottom panel. I'm going to add purse feet to it. And then we're just about done with the exterior. I'm going to measure one inch from each edge of the decoville. Is that what I do? Or is it one inch? Yeah. And this was, okay, so six is half. Yeah. And four. So two. So I found the center of the bottom. We've got all of those marked out. So I'm just going to make one little slit in the bottom in those four marks. If you're using like screw on purse feet, you can just make a little hole. And then I'm going to turn them, and that creates a little extra grip, and then add the washer. And then I'm going to use duct tape over top of all of that. Just lay them open. And I don't just do one little piece to cover it. I just do a long piece that I'm probably going to even end up stitching through. I just find it to be like extra secure then. And then any of that excess, you could just cut off. Okay. We're going to line this up along the bottom. Oh. And your bottom panel should fit just perfectly on top of all that. And this is going to be a half inch seam allowance. And then you're going to lay this flat top stitching through all of that. Repeat. Ooh, bless you.
Okay, so now we're going to sew the side seams. And this is going to be a half inch seam allowance as well. I'm not squaring the bottom just yet. Because we're going to be adding our crossbody strap connector and so I want my side seam to sit flat so I'm just adding a little piece of tape on the side And then this is going to go an inch and a half from the top as well. And this is going to be our D ring or triangle ring. And for this, unlike the others, you probably just want to prep one at a time so that nothing moves as we're doing this. And you want it to be centered, so half an inch from either side. So there's our connector. And this, this is a little tricky, making sure that side seam stays flat. So there is that. If you wanted to, you could do an X through that as well. And here it is on this side.
okay. And then you really have to make sure that you've got that on nice and straight. Okay. Okay, so that is our exterior, mostly ready to go. The last step is squaring the bottom, where we just fold that last open corner. Oh. And then this is going to be a half inch seam allowance all the way across the bottom. And then if you want to, you can turn this, just kind of admire what it's looking like at the moment. It's so cute. I really like the connectors being kind of hidden on that side. I think that's fun, where they're obvious on this side. You could absolutely choose to make this bag as like a drop-in liner, where you measure an inch around, tape it, fold it, and then we would drop in our lining. But we're gonna move on to making the lining. <clears throat> We've got one zipper pocket that we're adding, and then a zipper panel to the top, and that's pretty much it. So, let's get all these out. I don't have any zipper end hardware on hand, so I won't be able to add a zipper end. But that's okay. Okay, that's for my zipper. I have this stitched by light of night tag from Heartwood and Hyde that I thought was very, very twilight. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the lining of the bag. We'll do two and a half from the top. We'll center it. And then all of that we're going to pull to the back and tie off. 
One, two, three, four. And then if you want, you could even add a little duct tape or glue to the back of that and let it sit for a little bit. Oh, man. I thought I was so slick too, but somehow I pulled out one too many stitches. So it's missing a little stitch there. I was like, surely this is right. Well, it was really perfect. Now it's not. It's okay. It's okay. y'all I'm dying it's just meant to live without that stitch there and it will hold up just fine so the way I do my zipper pocket nowadays is nowhere near what's written in the pattern but you can still do it the way it's written in the pattern but I'm putting my zipper down face up on the lining panel and basting it within a quarter of an inch and repeating that on the other side lining up those pieces and then if you're using just regular cotton you could iron this but I'm gonna stitch it down starting from this side with the zipper pull you're basically just stitching down the line you made already. And then I'm gonna go down this side over the teeth. And there's so many different ways to make a zipper pocket like this, so whatever floats your boat. I'm adding double-sided tape over my stitching and this is how we're going to place the pocket in in a little bit set that aside for now I've got my overlay which already has tape and I've got my lane my lane mining piece main lining piece I'm gonna set this overlay down two and a half inches centered from the top And I'm pressing the overlay at the top, right up against that ruler, and then evenly pressing out the rest. Okay. And then we're gonna top stitch just across the top outer edge. Don't pull out too many stitches. Do 
do three. Okay. And then we're going to cut away inside. We've got our overlay ready to go and our lining ready to go. And you want your overlay to match the widths of your pocket. Just go really slow, pressing that down. So it's nice and even. And my zipper pull is way off to the side. I want it that way. Needle down in the corner. And sew it across. Make sure the lining is laying flat out on both sides. I'm getting close to the other side, so I'm going to leave my needle down, push my zipper pull through that little opening. And now we will close that opening. Lay this flat down and trim that excess. And we are birthing this bag. You could also do it as a drop-in if you prefer. So we'll trim that a little bit, extra zipper tape. So I'm going to start with this side. I'm going to fold up the edge and I'm going to start at an angle and work my way up. On this side I'll start on the side over here, folding it up an equivalent amount, and finishing at the pivot of the bottom. There we go. We'll pop that open. And you can test it out, give it a little open, check for threads. Now that our lining is mostly complete, it's just time to do our zipper. So I want to square this off. So you can use whatever method works for you. Um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, just sew it at an angle. No, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the way that looks, but you do you. So I'm gonna fold this. I'm folding the zipper tape up to match the edge of the teeth. So I keep my nail underneath and then I pull the rest of it to the back. 
So the excess zipper tape is underneath the closest edge on top. And then I'm using a lighter to melt it together. And then just unclip to make sure it's fused well enough. Okay. And I'm going to fold these up. And there's all different methods for making a um, zipper panel or zipper placket, as some people call it. So as long as your finished measurements are 14 inches wide, you do you. I'm also adding eighth inch wide double sided tape to the edge where my zipper is going to go. You could add a little bit of Decaville light to this if you wanted, but I think the vinyl and the waterproof canvas is going to have enough structure that it would be a little too much to add anything else, especially since we're top stitching through this. And then we'll just start with one side of this first. And our zipper is going to go right side down. I like to start it about an eighth of an inch from that folded edge. If you're worried about your zipper pull coming off of the bag at any point um, while you're making it, not when you're done, <laughs> you can stitch over the raw end of your zipper tape, but we should be okay. If things are uneven, because this is like a quarter inch off, weird, but you can refold it to match. Okay. And then we're going to start about an eighth of an inch from the edge and anywhere between a quarter and three eighths of an inch seam allowance that you can do is the goal. So I am pressing my seams open because we're going to be top stitching this entire thing. And it sounds like we're going to run out of bobbin soon.
great. And then we're just going to repeat those steps on the other side, lining up the edge of our zipper panel. And then lining over top of that. And again, for some reason, this is quarter inch wider. It could be because I cut it on the fold and wasn't super careful versus cutting it with a ruler. So that's, that's interesting. Could also be thicknesses of the material accounting for more or less in one direction. So there's that completed. And I feel like my zipper is a good enough length. It's about 18 inches. So I'm gonna create a zipper end. I'm gonna fold it so that it's about an inch and a half wide. Okay, it's a little short. And I really am just making it up. I don't, I don't know. Right now I'm folding it. To just be a little thing. Kind of want Edward's face to just be like right at the, the bottom of it. And I don't think it matters that it's raw edged because it's not gonna fray. So I'll just lay my zipper in the middle of that. So that was just like a little three by three vinyl piece and I'll top stitch. Bobbin got me again. All right, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a different color for a minute. It's close enough, but I'm just worried I'm not gonna be able to get through top stitching. 
if I use that nearly empty bobbin. So don't tell anybody, okay? It still matches incredibly well, but it doesn't match the top thread. You know what I'm saying? Matches the vinyl. Looks nice. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to fold this in half. Snip my center. Face up. We're going to baste this on. And then we're going to put right sides together on the lining, half inch seam allowance. And if you want to leave the bottom open, you can. The Twilight Song just started playing through the headphones and I'm dying. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to square the bottom of the bag after. I think it'll just be easier. Again, you can do this as a drop in if you'd prefer to. But we're going to put right sides together. So I have to flip this back. Make sure all your hardware is pointing down and that your zipper pocket is to the back of your bag if that's where you'd like it. Uh, I'm actually going to do it the other way because otherwise I have my zipper pocket and that magnetic pocket on the same side and I don't necessarily want that. And then I want to clip those seams open. And clip around the top edge. My clips are very tired. I've been sewing so very much lately. Okay. Okay. And now it's a half inch seam allowance. I'm going to just do three eighths because it's not going to hurt anything. 
And I just really like three ace nowadays. Robin got me again, but that's okay, because I knew it would, and now I feel confident that this could get me through. Hopefully I don't eat those words. I'm just going slow, readjusting all those layers as needed. Okay, now we're ready to turn the bag. Which is really easy because I just left the bottom wide open. Push out the corners. making sure that everything looks good. Yeah. Okay. And then we're gonna close up the pocket, the bottom and then the pocket. So I've got my pocket lining turned out. I'm gonna grab the bottom of the bag to turn it through the pocket. So instead of fighting that whole bag through that hole, you're just fighting the bottom. So that's like way easier. I remember the first time I tried it, I was like, no, I think that's stupid. And then the more I did it and the more structured I'd make bags and things like that, I was like, oh, all right, that's cool. All right, half inch seam allowance. I'm sewing across the bottom first. And then we're gonna square the sides. Okay. 
And now all of this is going to get shoved into the bag. Even that zipper panel is going to get tucked inside. And you want to roll that seam in between your hands to make sure it's fitting nicely. And then we need to close up our zipper pocket. I used to make this bag all the time. I'm going to go ahead and test, zip it shut. Looks good. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and finish it off by top stitching, and then she will be done. I'm going to go ahead and start kind of on this side here. And we're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch from the top edge. And if you need to increase your stitch length to like a five, it's a good time to do it. And I designed it with that zipper panel in that top seam to give a lot of structure up at the top of the bag. But I realize that can be a little bulky for some machines. And then just be careful as you're coming down off of that bulk. Go slow. As we're getting back up over the bulk, just go slow.
Make sure your zipper tape is just completely out of the way. So there is the top zipper completed. It fits so nicely. And then we're going to rivet our handles on and just clip the crossbody strap. And I think this is a nice size for a crossbody as well. I'm going to use my little strap end tool from Jolie Lee Creations, or my, what do they call it, I don't know, uh, rivet placement guide for straps. Um, I mostly just use A and C, I feel like it's so much easier to get on the strap and just know it's going to fit around the hardware. We're going to punch these holes and then set our rivets. To set the rivets and add the handles, I'm going to do it so that my seamed, that folded edge is on the inside. And I like to start with my post in the back, come up to the front, and add the cap. I am using a cam snaps press and the buckle guy die to set the rivet Over to the back okay. I like to wiggle it in slowly press the cap on to make sure that it catches and it doesn't um, bend. All right, seam on the inside. So handle is on, and then I'll press. Into place. Okay, it's finished. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I love this vinyl. It's like very leather-like. I love the handles. They're like perfectly sized with this bag. It's just so cool. All right, so that is the Petite Elaine. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you all next time.